Hello guys, I'm Peter from Build a Boeing. In my previous video, I mentioned that I was going to convert this weather panel to the simulator, and I've now been working on the hardware and um, would like to show you what I've done with the inside of this panel. Let me just go through the functions here. You, I have my old panel here. This is a, from a real aircraft, and this is one of these uh, plastic panels that you buy from the internet. Uh, and I've been very happy with this, but you can see the functions are more or less the same. Test, weather, and map. And over here you have the same uh, functions. You have a tilt, and here you have a tilt. This goes to 15, this only goes to 10. I can live with that. And here you have the gain. And here you have the gain as well. And um, the only thing that's different is here, the auto is on the maximum. Whereas over here, the auto is at the minimum. Apart from that, the functions are the same. So uh, this panel is usable in the cockpit. It's a potentiometer, a potentiometer with a switch here at the end. I don't know if you can hear that click if I turn it all the way up here. There we are, there's a click now because that's the switch, you need to click it into the auto position. And here is a normal uh, rotary switch. Okay, so let's have a look at the inside. This is what it looks like. Now, I did a video about converting this audio control panel uh, early on, and as I mentioned in that video, in, um, in real aircraft uh, electronics, there are things happening inside these boxes. It's just not a matter of on off switches. No, it's, uh, there are things happening inside here and signals go in different directions. Whereas in the simulator, all the signals just goes to your computer. So this rotary switch right here actually has two layers, as you can see here, layer one there and layer two. And the wiring was a bit special because some of the functions were connected to layer one, which we, I can't remember the, the exact functions, but let's just say here the normal and the map and the center was a layer one and then standby and test was a layer two. And the, they were connected in different ways, but the strange thing was that if I tried to do the, to take the wiring directly into the simulator, it would short circuit sometimes. So I had to strip the wires from this switch and then do my own wiring. If you watched my previous video, you would see some beautiful wiring inside this panel. And I was so fascinated by that beautiful pen here that I tried to, to reproduce it here. Not as beautiful, but still we have this bent going up uh, as uh, the original wiring. The potentiometer down here, I'll just turn this around, is a 2.5K potentiometer. Uh, normally I use 10k in the cockpit, but um, let's see if I can uh, do with that 2.5k potentiometer. Up here, here there's a white, uh, uh, red and a black wire, that's for the potentiometer. And up here is a yellow and a black wire, that's for the switch. Over here there was a stepper motor with some strange gearing. And I, um, I took the stepper motor out, I couldn't find a use for it. And then I tried to get the gears working, uh, and then I just ended up directly connecting the potentiometer, as you can see here. There's the potentiometer. Connect that directly to the knob, like that. So um, I designed and 3D printed a shaft here that uh, connects to the gears that's uh, on the end of this uh, knob. And then you, I could put the uh, shaft from the potentiometer into the same uh, shaft here. But this, um, I don't know, this do hickey. Then I did some three D printing on the um, the mount here. This is a copy of the uh, stepper motor mount, and I did two copies of it uh, and a few uh, spaces here. So that was two days in happy 3D printing land, and I'm very uh, happy with this uh, design. It feels sturdy and um, not that complicated. On the back here, set it around like that. On the back, I've used two DB9 plugs, as you can see over here. 
This one is for the potentiometers, and I'm using three pins over here, one, two, three, and the three pins over here, one, two, three, for the potentiometers, and this is for the switches. The yellow one up here is for the different switches. I'm very happy with these DB9 plugs because they don't come loose as easy as using other kind of wiring. Uh, normally I would have a Dupont uh, terminals here in the back and I'll show them in a, in a few seconds and they could come loose but um, instead of having direct wiring all the way to the interface card it's a good idea to be able to take a unit out without having to uh, unplug it at the interface card. Here I can just unplug these two and then I can take it out. I was also considering changing these aircraft bolts. You can see the brown wiring running around here is for the backlighting. And I know it's a sin, it's a death sin almost in the simming community to take these bolts out. That's why I've decided to keep them. But I did take them out of this panel, my audio control panel that I uh, interfaced or converted a few months ago i actually take took the aircraft bulbs out of this and uh, replaced it with leds and i was just about to do the same here but decided to keep the aircraft bulbs um, the uh, aviation plug you can see down here is my new standard for um, powering my different modules this is ground this is five and that is 12 watts and that will be uh, mounted on all the conversions that i'm doing from here on Ground 5 and 12 volt steady power. Whereas here on this uh, air, uh, audio selector panel, I have some 12 volts over here, but that's backlighting, so that's different. Uh, this is a, a dimmed signal. If I turn down the dimmer in the pedestal, the signal coming in um, these uh, aviation plugs would not be a steady 12 volt connection. connection. I hope that makes sense. So that's a way of making sure that you don't put the wrong things in the wrong holes. We should never do that. Uh, here, if it's three pin, then it's a steady power directly from the power source. And if it's two pins, then it is a 12 volt LED dimming lights. Converting this was just... Um, was was not that difficult, but whenever I do something here in this cockpit, things just escalate and get out of hand. And it was a bit um, bit the same story with this panel. I will perhaps cover that in another video. But um, this was this is the old uh, weather radar panel, and it shared these switches with the cell cal panel just uh, placed down below, uh, because there's only three three switches here, and it has five. That's a group of eight which um, works very good with the open cockpits uh, MasterCard, which has a group of nine switches, nine switches in each group. And so this is the wires, and here you can see the Dupont wires, um, and they are prone to come loose. This is a potentiometer, you put it in there, and then you can see there are two sets of pins, then you connect it with the other set to the interface card. But what happens, and that always happens, is this is the... Um, rotary switch and the wires they just bend a bit and they go like this so actually this has come loose at some point and I haven't noticed but then one of these uh, positions they just stop working and that's why from here on always get things enclosed inside a box close the box test it interface it and then whatever you do nothing will ever come loose here um, and that is a very important lesson for me by now. Just enclose everything in boxes. Actually, I'm doing my transponder panel over here. And you can see I've 3D printed a box as well here so that nothing will come loose once mounted. One last thing to notice, I've mentioned this before, if you do these OEM panels or just if you do a pedestal, make sure that you, the bracket that everything lays on here is no more than nine millimeters. Uh, I have one that's 10 millimeters, and that means that whenever I get one of these OEM panels, I need to cut it, cut the bracket, and it's just a mess. Just make sure that the bracket this leans on here is no more than 9 millimeters. And I reckon that's it. For now, I'll do a separate video on my pedestal nightmare version 3. 
when starting to convert these um, panels. And uh, I think in the video about this panel, I recommend daisy chaining uh, your wiring. And now I've gone from that to no, no ever daisy chain your wiring. That's just gonna be a total mess. But I'll cover that in my um, upcoming video about the radio panels that I just replaced. I'm Peter from Bilderberg. You guys take care. Bye-bye.